Okay, the first step in designing what we call combinational logic circuits is to understand the legal operations and manipulations that we can do on, on logic expressions in order to create the ultimate circuit. So to begin with, let's take a look at what a combinational logic circuit is and then we'll move into some of the basic uh, definitions for the algebra, algebraic system we're going to use. So to begin with, a combinational logic circuit is combinational logic. Also, sometimes people call this combinatorial logic. We'll call it combinational logic. Is a circuit in which the output depends on the instantaneous values of the input. So for example, if we had A, B, and F, F is going to be a function of A, B, and C, meaning that any time there's a change on one of the input variables, the output will be updated accordingly. Uh, this is a very simple definition, but it illustrates that, or it calls out that there is no such thing as storage in the circuit. So you don't have A and a prior value of A, or B and a couple prior values of B. It means that whenever these inputs change, the output changes. Now this is different from the other type of uh, logic design, which is sequential logic design, in which there is storage, but that'll be covered later. For now, what we want to focus on is that the output de depends on the instantaneous values of the inputs, and that by definition is a combinational logic circuit. Okay, so when we first start looking at creating a combinational logic circuit, we want to understand the operations that are allowed and also some of the manipulations that uh, we can do two logic expressions in order to put them in a form which is more easily uh, implementable. And there was, a, there was a man by the name of George Boole who was a 18th century or a, a, a 19th century mathematician uh, in England and he was the first to come up with an algebraic framework for a two-valued system. So this was an uh, algebraic framework. And he was the first person to do this, and he kind of defined all of the rules for a two-valued system. And this was long before we had transistors and integrated circuits. So this was kind of a theoretical uh, mathematics approach to it. But as a result of him being the first one to do this, uh, the algebraic system was named after him. So this is where we come up with the term Boolean algebra. And Boolean algebra <coughs> refers to the algebraic framework for a two-valued system. So it's, it defines all the operations, all the, the theorems, all the axioms, all the postulates that we, are, that we use for this system. And it really sets the stage for all logic design because this al Boolean algebra allows us to take any arbitrary functional description of behavior such as a truth table and synthesize the circuitry that we'll, we can actually build and implement the, uh, the logic circuit. So George Boole was that guy. Uh, now, there, to start talking about the, the algebraic framework, some of the first things we want to do is we want to look at just the, the, the truths about the system. So let's start by listing out the operators, so the operations that are allowed in a Boolean algebra framework. So we're only going to allow three operations. And those are going to be the, those are going to be the and operation, the or operation, and the not operations. So we're not going to use exclusive OR gates or NAND gates, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All we're going to do is we're going to define this mathematical framework for three operations, the AND, the OR, and the inverter. And just to, to kind of give some background on the uh, mathematical side of this, the operators, the AND operators, is actually, is actually given the symbol uh, little triangle kind of looking thing like that and that is actually the uh, conjunction so this is logical conjunction and then the or operation is given a symbol like this and this is actually called uh, logical disjunction and then finally the inverter operation or the not operation is given this symbol right here and that is formally logic negation and 
I just bring that up because sometimes when you talk about Boolean algebra, you can do it at a very theoretical uh, level, and you'll often see these operators used in some of the, the theories and this terminology. Now, engineers, we tend to use these these terms right here, and, or, and invert, or and, or, and not, and we also use these operation symbols. For an and, we use the uh, center dot. For the or, we use a plus sign, and for inverter, we either use a tick, or we use uh, the variable with a not operator above it. Okay, so that's a little bit of background. Um, now what we want to do is let's begin by looking at the axioms within a Boolean algebraic system. Now what is an axiom? An axiom is a truth, and it's a truth that is so simple that it does not need to be proved. Now this is different from a theorem. If you proposed a theorem, it uh, has to be proved, and once a theorem is proved, then you can accept that theorem as fact or as truth. But before you can even get to a theorem, you have to have just some, some basic truths about the system before you can even get started. So there's a set of five axioms which are used within Boolean algebra. And again, these are, these are very simple, but you have to state them and you have to accept them before you can move forward. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at the first axiom. And it is going to be the logical values axiom. And what this states is simply that in a, in a two-valued number system or in, a Boolean, or in a Boolean algebraic framework, there can be only two values, 0 and 1. So any variable, any signal can only take on a 1 or a 0. It's a very simple, but it's a rule. You have to accept that. That is a truth about the system. So if you say you're using Boolean algebra, you immediately say, OK, if I have a variable, it can only take on a 0 or 1. So that's the first thing that we have to accept about a Boolean algebra framework. Uh, the second thing we want to do is the logical or the definition of logical negation. Now we know what this is. Uh, negation is simply an inverter, but we have to state that. So if we're going to use this in a mathematical framework, we have to state what logical negation is. So here's what negation is. If a is equal to 0, then a negated is equal to 1. And conversely, if a is equal to a 1, then that means a not is equal to a 0. So very simple statements. We already knew that to begin with, but it's basically stating the operation of an inverter. You have to have that truth accepted before you can move on to anything more complicated. So we've just stated what logical negation is. The third thing we're going to have is the definition of a logical product. Now, we already know what a logical product is. It's, a, it's basically an AND gate, but we have to state the rules for that. So the definition of a logical product is as follows. The only time that if you have two input variables, A and B, the only time that A conjoined or ANDed with B is equal to a 1 is when a is equal to a 1 and B is equal to a, a 1. So that's the only time you'll ever have A is equal to a 8 and it would B is equal to 1. Otherwise, A and it would B is equal to a 0. So that's kind of a, a, a different way of stating the logic behind a logical product. We've discussed it like this. So we've discussed it in a truth table form where we've said, okay, A and it would B and the output is f. So we list all possible input codes. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the output is 0, 0, 0, 1. Notice that the only time that the output f was uh, a 1 was when both a and b were also 1s. So that's what this statement says right here. Otherwise, the output is a 0. So that's what that statement is. So that's the third axiom in uh, Boolean algebra. So it's the third truth that we have to have. And then let's take a look at the fourth truth, which we'll have in Boolean algebra. And that is going to be the definition of the logical sum. So what we're going to do here is we'll have a logical, I'll go like this, logical sum. And this is simply the OR operation. So we, just, we know that this is an OR gate. And we already kind of know what this is, so we take A and B, and the output's going to be F. But the actual definition of this is as follows. 
A ORD with B is equal to a 1 if A is equal to a 1 or B is equal to a 1. Otherwise, A ORD with B is equal to a 0. So that's, this, that's the verbal way of, this, of saying the same thing that a true table would say if we had A, B, and F listed out, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the output looked like this, 0, 1, 1, 1. So this part of the statement right here is A or with B will be a 1 if A or B is a 1. So anytime you have a 1 on the input, the output will be a 1. Otherwise, the output will be a 0. So just again, it's just the definition of what a logical sum is, and you have to have what these operators are. So we talked about you can only have three operators. We have, we have ands, ors, and inverts. You have to define what they're going to do. Okay, so the last axiom we're going to have is number five here, and that axiom is going to be logical precedence. So what loss, logical precedence means is the order of the operators. So which one has precedence? And here's the rules that we're going to have. Not precedes an and. And also an and precedes an or. So those are the, those are the order of operations. So what that means is as follows. If I had an expression where I said f is equal to, let's say for example, a ORD with b not, we would say, which one goes first? Do we perform the OR operation or do we f define the NOT operation first? And the answer is by the axiom logical precedence or the logical precedence op uh, axiom, we are going to take whatever b is, we are going to first invert it, then we will do the OR operation. Same thing if we had something where we just said A ended with B not. We would do the not operator on B first. Then we would take that result and we would and it with A. Okay? Let's do uh, one that has all three. So let's go A ended with, actually let's go A not, ended with B not, or with C. So you're given that and you say, well, which one goes first? Do I do the, the nots first? Do I do the or first? Do I do the ands? Well, Based on the logical precedence axiom, you would first take A and B and you would complement them. Then you would take those values, you would and them together. Then finally you'd take this result and you would or it with C. An easy way to, to highlight the order of precedence is using parentheses. So in an algebraic expression, parentheses always win out. So we could have said, we could have stated this precedence even more clear by doing this. We could have said A naught will occur first, within the parentheses is always evaluated. Then B naught will also take place first. Then I want this operation to then take place and then finally it would be ORD with C. So parentheses will always win out. So if you're ever in a situation where you really did want something, let's say we had, uh, let's say we had like Q is equal to A ORD with B and it was C. And we really did want this to go first. If we listed, if we wanted A or to be ORD with B before we ended the result with C, we would have to put parentheses in here because just logical precedence by itself would not give us the right answer. So if we really wanted these to go first, what we'd have to do is put parentheses in there and then allow the result to be ANDed with C. So those are, this is the beginning of Boolean algebra. So we had to state the legal operators. We're only going to have ANDs, ORs, and inverts. We're only going to have variables that take on the values 0 and 1. And then we're going to have these axioms that define logical negation, logical product, logical sum, and finally, the logical precedence of our three operators.